Welcome and thank you for joining us today for the last Christian podcast. We're so blessed to have you join us. It's time again to join Brother J.D. Williams in seeking the hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, chasing away the worries of the world and replacing them with the blessed hope. We're in a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, at the last trumpet, the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Brother J.D. Williams insists there must be a final person or last Christian to accept Christ before the sound of the trumpet. Will it happen today? Here now, Brother J.D. Williams. Well, thank you for joining us for another edition of the Last Christian Podcast. My name is J.D. Williams, and I have the honor and privilege today of welcoming in my guest, and her name is Jacell Prescada. I hope I didn't mess that up. I sure tried not to, but welcome to the Last Christian Podcast. It's a pleasure to have you. Good afternoon. Um, Mr. Williams, good afternoon. Thank you for having me on your podcast this afternoon. Well, it is a pleasure for sure. Now, one thing that I always uh, do, Jacelle, is I always let people kind of tell everybody just who they are. You know, because um, my audience knows me, but they have no idea who you are, and I want them to get to know you really well. So just who is Jacelle? Prescada. So I am Jacelle Prescada. I grew up on Tobago's beautiful tiny island in the Twin Republic of Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean. Beautiful area. I was mainly yes. <laughs> I was mainly raised in a single parent household by my selfless, generous mother after my grandmother passed away. I hold an associate degree in psychology with honors and a certificate in introduction to counseling as well as a certificate in Christian counseling. As a minister of the gospel, I would have written a book called Finding Me Again. And I also am a speaker mentor um, who concentrate. And the reason why I'm a speaker mentor is because I concentrate on empowering Christian women who have been through a divorce to rebuild their lives by rediscovering their values and purpose and reimagining a future fully aligned with God's mission for their life. Amen. And as I said, I am a speaker mentor who shares from my own experience. And I would usually, because of this, I will take women through a three hours approach that's repurposing, rediscovering, redefining, and repurposing their life after a divorce so that they too can discover themselves and rebuild their life, not just after divorce, but any loss that they may experience. Right. Well, I can tell you, you know, unfortunately, divorce is out there, you know, and it happens. And nobody, uh, I, I went through it myself, okay? Just full, full disclosure here, many, many years ago, and uh, since then, uh, have remarried and have been married now for well over 20 years. <laughs> and I, I, give, I give credit to God for that because I was not a Christian at the time of my first marriage, and I am a Christian now, and I can tell you that there's a, a 100% difference in how you approach life from that and I know that you are a Christian um, and so you look at all of this through the through the lens of a Christian and through the lens of a minister correct yes yes I, I do can you uh, it, I know my story and my, my audience knows my story of coming to the Lord but I think it's important that they know yours um, so when did you accept Jesus Christ? Was this early in life or, or did you wait like I did for many decades before you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Oh, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. I was 23 years old when I'm 24. I was in the year 1997. I accepted him as my Lord and personal Savior. I would normally term it as um, I encountered my first love then. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. And Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. One hundred percent. You know, you uh, now you are. Uh, I, I want to get the the name of the of the area. I know it well, by the way, because I used to I used to uh, work in the airline industry for decades, uh, and I took full advantage of all those travel benefits that you get. You know, so I'm aware of and have been to uh, your area, Tobago, um, Trinidad. Yes. Trinidad, beautiful. I mean, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. beautiful. It, is it still uh, pretty much tourist based? Because I, I know when I was there, and this would have been back in um, the eighties and nineties. Uh, I think is the time I visited, and it, it was real touristy. You know, it was it was it looked like the economy was pretty much built on tourism. Is, is that the way it is there now? Yes, especially the island that I am from because it's Trinidad and Tobago and right. I grew up in the island of Tobago and Tobago is more a tourist destination than Trinidad but both islands, Trinidad and Tobago, but the more emphasis is placed on Tobago as the um, yeah, sun, main, sea and yeah. sun of yeah. the Caribbean, yes, yeah. so it is. <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't want to get too much into that because that, that's not what you're here for. But I did want you to, to realize mm -hmm. that I am familiar with where you're from and I know about it. And I do I do encourage people to, to go and visit because it is a, just a, a beautiful area. But now uh, let, let's talk about your book because that's why you're here. Um, what motivated you, first of all, to write the book? Okay, so at first... I did not realize that one day I would have written a book. But however, I realized one day that I, I felt deep within me that something was agitating within me, that I have something to do for God. More than I'm um, just ministering the gospel, but I would have gone through a very hard season in my life, as we, we just mentioned it, uh, um, divorce. Um, that hard season in my life I would have gone through is when uh, my... Um, ex-husband was unfaithful to me and at the same time two years after that my mother died so mm. I would have been grieving two deaths at the same time yeah. and that um, separation that I would have gone through where my husband was unfaithful and he left you know I felt as though I was lost at first I thought I was lost in him but doing some profound work on myself I realized I was not really lost in him but I really would have lose myself into being who everyone wanted me to be instead of being who God wanted me, Jaisal, to be. Right. And at that injuncture in my life, when I went through those two um, hard um, circumstances, I, and through the separation from my, my ex-husband after he left, I started to do some introspection and it, has, it is at that point of doing introspection that I recognize that Jaisal, you're not really losting him even though he had, was unfaithful and left, but you need to come back to that place of knowing who you are as a person and what God has created you or who God has created you to be and to do. And from that, that is where everything started. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, anytime that someone goes through that, you know, there's, there's, first of all, there's the shock, you know, unless you're the one that initiates the divorce. Okay. Uh, there, there is, there is the shock that it happened. Uh, there's the embarrassment. There's no other way yes. to describe it. You know, you, you hate to tell people, uh, you know, that you've gone through it. But the good thing is for Christians, is that we can rely mm -hmm. on Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, for the strength yes. and simply put mm -hmm. those concerns in His hands and let Him take control of our life. And it sounds like that's kind of what you did in pulling yourself back up again. Um, can you tell, go into a little bit of, um, you know, I, I don't want to get too personal here, but a, a little bit of, of how you felt as you were going through that divorce process and what a role that Jesus Christ played in getting you back on track and uh, becoming the person that you are now. Great. Um, so while I was going through that season, and I, I always call it the hard, that hard season in my life, I felt rejected. Mm -hmm. I felt abandoned. Right. I felt... Um, 
I was emotionally pained, emotionally broken right. at that point in time when I was going through that. And the only person that I could have really, even though they were friends and they were family there supporting me, but that mending, that finding me again, that, that brokenness for me to be healed, it's only one person could have done that and reached deep within me to help me to come back to that place of um, being whole again and mm -hmm. that was Jesus Christ Amen. and he played a major role in me rediscovering redefining and repurposing my life after that hard season and I give him all the praise the honor and the glory and he would have given me steps and he would have he would have instructed me as I would have submitted to him I would as I would have seek his face and you know really cry out to him um, he would have helped me in that season of my life so that Amen. I can find myself again. Amen. Now, of course, it, that is a difficult time. There's no, there's no doubt about that. And you mentioned that you did have some support in place. Uh, I didn't, I didn't ask before and I didn't ask in the pre-show. Of course, this was a marriage. So did you have, do you have children from that marriage and were they a part of this in any way, shape or form? Um, no, we did not have children in that marriage, so I do not have any kids. Yet. Okay, so well, in, in a way, that's a blessing because you know when when I went through when I went through my divorce, we had three kids. You know, and that's you know I think it's more um, I think it's more traumatic for the uh, for the children than it is mm -hmm. for uh, for the adults that are going through it. So, in a way, that's a blessing. Um, you know, having kids is a blessing too, but you know that's a whole different, whole whole different topic a, there. Now, um, when you started to uh, to write this book, did you know you were starting to write a book, or were you just taking notes? It was was it how long did it take you to actually understand? Hey, I'm I'm writing a book here. Oh, okay. So when I was going through what I was going through. And, you know, being all alone, you know, after my mother passed away, because she was my main support okay. after yeah. God, when I went through uh, my right. um, the separation and divorce, and she passed away. So writing was one of, was a therapy for me. It was something that I would do that to help me to heal. I, I would put, put it that way, would have helped me to heal. So there will yeah. be times I would just begin to write. I, I believe the Holy Spirit will would, uh, would download stuff in me and I will just write mm -hmm. and I would share it with others via Facebook and persons right. would tell me right. that mm -hmm. um, what you are sharing is so inspirational and uh, I was actually writing and the writing was encouraging myself and I believe it's the Holy Spirit was encouraging me and while I'm encouraging myself, um, as the Holy Spirit would encourage me, I would share it with others and encourage others, and I would get good feedback about it. Even up until that time, I, I did not know I would have been writing a book. But there was one day I met, so I met uh, God allowed me to encounter someone, and I believe it was on a divine encounter, um, Dr. Nadine Collins, and I would have started a program, um, doing a prayer counselor program, even while doing the prayer counselor program, I did not know that I had a book inside of me. <laughs> but I just yeah. felt, <laughs> yeah, I just felt like there was something agitating within me, and there is something more for me to do for God. Yeah. So God have a way; He knows how He 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 knows what He does, and He really sets us up Amen. for what He has planned Amen. for us. And yeah. I would have joined that prayer counselor program. After the prayer counselor program, I would have done a runway to soul program. And it's in that runway to soul program where I would have gained clarity on what I need to do. So, yes, I would have gained clarity. And this is where the speaker mentorship came in. Because right after that runway to soul, I did a speaker mentorship. And in the speaker mentorship, I had to share my story of what I went through, yeah. you know, with okay. this divorce. It was difficult and it was painful to open yeah. up and share yeah. Because I was still healing. And I did that. And right after that is when God said, okay, now it's time to write. Yeah. It's well, time to write. And that's how I began to write I that have, book. I have heard this so many times. And I'm not saying that to, to, to make this sound like, you know, 
you're just one of because you're not. What, I, what I'm saying is that it seems to me that anytime there's a new author, they always get started doing something else, you know, taking notes, um, a diary, writing to a family member, whatever the case may be. And then all of a sudden, especially when it comes to anything involving our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you get this message from God saying, okay, now, you know, I, I want you to write a book. I want you to get me in this thing and let people know what how oh. I have affected your yeah. life. And it, oh. I, I can tell that even though it was a painful experience for you to go through, that it also was a motivational thing for you. It was a spiritual awakening in many ways yes. and bringing everything together. Before we get too much, too much deeper into this, and we got a long way to go here, but... Give us the name of the book again, uh, and also where people can find it right now, because I know there's a lot of people that are going to want to pick up this book. Okay, so the name of the book is Finding Me Again, and A Practical Approach to Rebuilding Your Life After Divorce. Amen. But the emphasis on mainly on the book is Finding Me Again, and persons can get this book on Amazon, because okay. it's on Amazon. Yeah. Okay. Amazon.com, yeah. you can't find it. And Amazon, uh, I can't tell you how many. I, I live out in the sticks. I mean, I know you live on the islands and all that kind of good stuff, but I live out way out in rural country, okay? we, I, I, my, my town's got 3,000 people in it. You know, and in the United States, that means that we're in a very, very tiny little pinpoint place here. And Amazon delivers to me every day. You know, that's just kind of life. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's just kind of life and, and life away from the big city. Um, but now, take us through the book. Where does it start? How do you how do you begin the book? At, at what point in your relationship or in your life uh, do you do you pick things up? Okay, so the first chapter in the book speaks about my childhood days. Okay. So I will speak about so so persons to get to know who Jessa right. is from her childhood days. That's as the first chapter. So I will speak about that a lot, you know, right up to the point where I would, uh, um, I would have started um, employment, started to work, that sort of thing. So it takes you to a journey of who I am from my childhood days. The second chapter speaks about encountering my first love. Okay. And uh, I would have Was... done it in a way that when folks read it, who is Jesus Christ? Amen. 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 Okay. So, so Jesus okay. has been a big part of your life, your entire life, is, is what you're telling me. Um, you said that you were saved about 22, 23 years old, somewhere in that, in that range, which is much earlier, yeah. than, earlier than myself. But uh, had Jesus played a, a role in your life prior to that? Had you always kind of wondered about it or gone to church or anything like that before you were saved? Okay, so I grew up in a home that I would say we had a fear for God. So my mother, because I told, I would have said I grew, I grew up in a single parent home. So my mother would always have um, every Sunday morning gospel music on, listening Maybe. to Jim Reeves. Okay. And then, you know, got, um, preachers. So she will have me seated as a little child listening to gospel message and stuff i would have all of that in the book as well and also listening to gospel songs and we would go to church um go to church every sunday she would send me to church and that sort of thing so we had a bit of a, a fear of the lord and mm -hmm. i would have gone to denominational schools you know okay. um primary school we call it primary here go to the de denominational school where they will speak mm -hmm. about god but mm -hmm. as I, I don't believe that I would have truly surrendered my all to God until that encounter that I would have had with him at that age. Okay. I would have repeated the sinner's prayer when I was very young. So I had and I, I knew about him, but knowing him personally and developing that relationship with him, I don't believe I had that then, right. but yeah. I knew about him. And had a yeah. fear for him. Well, yes. that brings uh, that brings me to um, something that is near and dear to my heart, which is raise up a child in the way he should go, and will never depart from it. And that that speak that spoke to my life because that's how my my parents were. 
My, my mom yeah. played the piano in our church. My dad was a deacon in our church. So you can tell I was raised in a Christian home, yet chose not to go down that path for decades until I finally <laughs> did accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. But the thing is, I gave my parents a lot of credit for that. For not, you know, for yes. giving me that basis, and it sounds like that that was your rock. Your mom was was your uh, your main support. So I can't even imagine. You know, I've lost both my parents, even though I'm adopted child. So I found my birth mother, and I have that relationship now, which is kind of cool. But um, yeah. you know, I, I've lost both of them, so I cannot imagine what it would have been like to go through a single family uh, or a, a single parent home and then lose that number one support your best friend your mentor your advisor your you know, no other way to say it but your rock uh, that had to that had to have been a very uh, difficult time in your life especially coming off of a divorce it was kind of like a double whammy wasn't it yes it was so it's like i was grieving two deaths yeah. And I would have written about that in the book as well, Grieving Two Decks. That's a chapter in the book, Grieving Two Decks, and, ex and express, you know, what it was like, you know, yeah. to go through that. Yeah, yeah that, that had to be really rough. Now, uh, when, you begin, when you realized that you were writing a book, how long did it take you from the time that you, that you actually realized that you were writing a book until you, you had a, a, a manuscript ready to submit? Okay, so September of 2021 is okay. when I actually started to put the book together. So by March, April of last year, that's 2022, is when I would have completed the manuscript. So by August of last year, September, the book was published. So it would have taken um, not an entire year, so from September to... March, April, the about, I would have put the manuscript together, and by the so the by August, September, it was published. So let's say a year for everything to come together. Yeah, and that um, you know, I don't think there's a norm in it. Um, I've got a co-host on my on the last Christian radio show. So he's written three books, and uh, one of them, uh, I don't know, I don't even want to get time frames in there. But anyway. Um, a year sounds about right. I think that, that books are that are written, you know, in warp speed, what I call warp speed, you know, from like maybe a month, two months, three months. I think that, you know, probably it needs a little bit more time than that to really uh, get everything in there that you want to and make sure everything's correct. But a year sounds about right. And um, uh, did, did you find that the um, that things flowed really well or did you hit... Uh, did you hit some spots along the way where you were like, well, I guess I'm done. <laughs> how, 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 did the, how did it go for you? Yes, there was a point where I, I felt like I was stuck. And my mentor, um, my coach, um, she would encourage us to dig deep. She would say, dig deep. There is more there. Mm -hmm. And at one point in time, I felt there was nothing else for me to write. And then I, re I recognized it's because I was suppressing stuff, stuff that I didn't want to come to the fore to deal with, especially the chapter on the hardest season where I would have spoken about the whole separation and divorce, you know, and gave yeah. some very, I was vulnerable in that chapter. So it was a chapter that caused that I would have been stuck at, but I had to, I prayed about it and I asked the Holy Spirit to please help me, please help yeah. me, you know, yeah. because I believe he was the one who would have held my hands and helped me to write. And I cried out to him and he did help me. And then I began to flow. So even when during the writing, I would have, I would have gone through some healing, some further healing Amen. while Amen. writing. Yeah. Do, do, do you feel like that writing the book was in some ways a therapy for getting through that situation? And, you know, it's hard to... It's hard. Emotions are raw when you come across in in that type of a situation. Did you find a, a healing process in getting it out in writing it? Sure. Yes. It there was uh, a further healing. Yes, it, I would have healed at a certain point, but by getting it out and putting it on paper 
and really like line by line, you know, yeah. you say line by line, precept by precept, and the Holy Spirit is there guiding you, guiding you and holding my hands. Yes, it was a form of therapy. I would have gained further healing while I was writing that book. Yes. Yeah. And of course, now you wanted to uh, also emphasize your relationship with Jesus Christ. That's obvious, I believe. Uh, but how much time, how much concentration did you put on making sure that you were giving Jesus Christ the the right amount of of glory for what you were putting together? Definitely, in um, like I would have said, one of the chapters is encountering my first love, and I could not have leave him out of this book because he was the one who made it possible Amen. for me to overcome what I um, went through. And he was the one who made it all possible and he was the one who instructed me to write. So I definitely could not have leave him out of this book because when you go through this book, there are chapters that speaks about um, almost all the chapters would have been glorifying him and saying, you know, it's because of him and this is what he did in my life. This is how he molded me. This is how Amen. he shaped me, especially in finding me again. And I would have a, a, a chapter on some scriptures that would have helped me in my hardest season. So, yeah, yeah. I had to glorify him. Even dedicating this book, I dedicated this book to my um, mother who is now deceased, but mm -hmm. also to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who would Amen. have made it possible for me to write this book. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, um, I, I, I have got a book. Okay, I've been working on it for 10 years now, okay? And I've actually, I've set it aside because I hit a, I've hit a spot and I just can't get by it. And, and then I got all this other stuff going on and I haven't even looked at it in a couple of years. Maybe someday I'll join you, okay? Maybe someday. But um, I got to a point where I was done, at least for now, uh, about, I don't know, halfway or a little bit more through. Um, anyway... Uh, you are giving the glory to Jesus Christ, and that is the important thing here. Uh, this podcast is all about that. And what we are trying to do here, and I've got to put this in. I didn't warn you it was coming, but I do it in every single show. I am looking for that last individual to accept Jesus Christ as Savior before the rapture of the church. I know it's going to happen. There has to be a last. There has to be that last individual to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior before the rapture of the church. That's just how it works. Now, there's going to be people saved after the rapture. No doubt about it. But those people that are saved after the rapture have to go through at least part of the seven years of tribulation. You don't want to be a part of that. All you've got to do is let the Lord know that you know you're a sinner, that you are asking for forgiveness, that you know that Jesus Christ died for you, that he rose from the grave on the third day, that he was seen by over 500 people. He ascended to heaven. He promised us he's coming back for his church, just like we're going to be coming back right after a very quick break for the second half of the last Christian podcast. Podcasters, influencers, media personalities, content creators, and aspiring or existing radio personalities. KRRB Revelation Radio now offers the opportunity to broadcast or syndicate both new or existing shows to all 50 states and more than 160 countries around the world. And if you currently operate a radio station, we offer you the opportunity to add several popular shows in virtually every genre for broadcast on your station. Choose programming from 30 minutes to two hours with each internationally syndicated show adding quality content sure to grow your listening audience. We even have excellent optional services to help you promote your show or station. These services are not only designed for audio use on the radio, but also include tools for use on social media, even YouTube. For more information, visit www.revelationradio.net or email the Ustreamit LLC broadcast network at office at ustreamit.net today. And welcome back, everybody, to the second half of the Last Christian podcast. And, you know, Giselle, there's, um, there's so much to your book. And I don't feel like I've done it justice yet. 
and I want to make sure that uh, we give everybody a very good idea of what they're going to get. And again, people can find that at Amazon. Please do. It's called Finding Me Again. And uh, I'm just going to let you go here for a couple of minutes and just tell us a little bit about the book, whatever it is that you want people to know, what the main focus of that book is, even though I kind of know. <laughs> but I want everybody I want everybody to know and, uh, because, you know, you've, you've obviously put a lot into it, a lot of, of thought. And just tell us a little bit about it, the way that you want people to know about it. Okay, so I'll, I'll give a little bit about it again. And this is what you would also find in the book. So this book is about a woman who was cheated on, rejected, and abandoned by her husband. She was emotionally broken and in pain and thought she had lost it all. At first, she thought she was lost in her husband, but eventually she discovered she was not. She really did not know who she was. In reality, she was lost in the idea of who she thought she should be to everyone else. It was in her hardest season that the truth struck her. Her life was turned upside down when she lost her husband and then her mother. Mm. It surely felt that way to her, but that season helped her to find herself again. Her submission to God turned everything around for her. God and His glory. She was able to rediscover, redefine, and repurpose her life after divorce, that hard season in her life. So the book gives insight into her background, who she is, where she was born, who she grew up with, and her childhood days. It tells us how she met her first love and the changes she experienced when she met him. The author takes you to a journey of the hardest season of her life and how she was able to overcome it and find herself again. Hey, so Amen. Basically... That is awesome. That really is. You know, the one, one thing, and I think you'll agree with me on this. I wish, I wish God would tell us what the plan was where we didn't have to discover it. You know, I mean, it took me 60 years to discover that this is what I'm supposed to do. I don't know how many years it took you to figure out that you needed to be an author. But, you know, God has a plan for each one of us. And it is yes. a perfect plan. But sometimes I just wish God has just hit me upside the head and said, you know, this is what you need to do. Don't waste your time with all that other stuff. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> now okay, you're, what I have this, go ahead okay what I've discovered even in writing this book and it's all, also in that book you know um, sometimes and I would have put it there you know God has to mold us and shape us into who he wants us right. to be so that we can be able to walk into his purpose for our lives so sometimes he has to prepare us you know I remember even the redefining part of me redefining myself there were some things i had to put off and some things i had to put on you know the bible talks about putting off and putting on mm -hmm. so i would have been like a people pleaser so i had to be able to um not you know put that off yeah. you know um i was i i believe i was a bit religious and not that relationship with jesus Christ right right was based on how i grew up and um these were things he was redefining me and making me over so that right. I can be transitioned into purpose, which is a chapter in the book as well, you know, transitioning into purpose, you know, walking yeah. in purpose yeah. as well. To, to, become, to become a new creature. Uh, yes. Yes, yes ab absolutely. Yes, yes. Now, you, of course, went through this divorce process, and then uh, a year later, you lose your mom. I mean, like I said, that had to be a double whammy there. And you, I know what it's like to go through those emotional periods of, of life. And it's very difficult to put things in perspective and then move on from it. Some people never can, by the way. Some people, you know, they, they hit that roadblock. They don't have Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They don't have that, that driving force to bring them back. But... And this might be difficult for you to talk about, but I also think it's important for you to talk about, and that is how long did it take you from that double whammy that you got to 
pull yourself together with the help of Jesus Christ and get yourself back on track to become the person that you have obviously become. Very confident, got a mission, you know what you're doing, but that didn't happen overnight. There had to have been a time frame there where it was a little bit rough. So if you want to talk about that a little bit. Yes, definitely. Um, as I would say, it took time, prayer, and patience for me to be who I am today. Right. But one thing I, I would like to say, and I'm, I'm thankful for, for that, is that I would have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior before I got married. Okay. So my, my foundation in Him would have played a major role to help me to transition that period and navigate what I was going through, right? Mm -hmm. I know, as you said, there are some persons who do not know Jesus Christ and it will be difficult for them, but there's still hope. There mm -hmm. is still hope. And, and that hope is finding a, a professional counselor, which I, who also knew Jesus Christ, had to do, go to professional counseling, you know, and get that, that, that therapy and that counseling as well. You know, a Christian counselor. Mm -hmm. I would have thought that that was part of me rediscovering. I had to seek professional help from a Christian counselor as well. Right. Right? So I, well, it took time for and patience, but one thing that would have helped me, and I would have mentioned it earlier, is that I had to do some introspection. So when the right. separation took place, I had that time to do reflection and do an introspection and look at myself. And I had to be honest with myself about areas in my life that I need to work on for me personally, not for him, right. but for me so that I could be able to rediscover, I could be able to change, you know, and allow God to transform me and to really be who he had originally called me to be. And also, as we spoke about, to walk into that purpose. Right. So it all started and it was a journey. It, was a, it was, a, was a process, but in that journey and in that process, what is important and what I have discovered, after that introspection, I had to choose to submit to God okay. and allow God to lead me and direct my path. So, you know the scripture that says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he's going to direct your path. So here I was at this injunction in my life, emotionally broken and pain. Who can I turn to? Yes, I w as I said, I would have had my mother, but then she, she left, she died. Mm -hmm. So now who do I have? Yes, I may have friends, trusted friends and family. But at the end of the day, there was only one person who could have done it for me. Mm -hmm. That internal part of healing. And that was my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who I had to submit to seek yeah. his face and allow him to work in me but it took time prayer and patience so yes um you would have said about even the time because there's not a i i don't know if i can put a time for it it depends on how much we choose to submit to god will make it would would, would, would bring would, my submission to god let me put it this way my submission to god and allowing him to lead me would have helped me to come to this injuncture of finding redis re repurpose in my life. Yeah? Amen. Amen. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, your mom, of course, was your first mentor. Again, I, I say as, a, as like a rock. You know, that's the person that you always count on. After losing mm -hmm. that person, and I understand that, you know, you've got to do the self-examination. We all have to do that in our lives when we go through difficult times. But was there someone, a church member, a minister, a, a friend, or even a stranger that yes. kind of gave you uh, an idea of, of what to do next, where the next steps to take, or that became a, a, a good support for you after your mother's death? Oh, sure. Um, I had some family members. I also had um, one or two friends as well. 
And these are people who I believe that I could have trusted and would have been able to pour out and share. Trust, trust. Because sometimes yeah. We, yeah, yeah. we want someone that we can talk with, that we can pour out, because it's not good to keep things inside. Yes, we have God, but a trusted friend, a trusted right. family member, you yeah. know, uh, I would have had um, senior um, members of my church as well who I who would have reached out to me and would have you know helped to counsel me as well and share certain things with me because you know they would have seen what would have happened right. and what would have um, yeah. yeah so yes I would have but yeah. the key thing is trust trust oh yeah what absolutely and yeah. you know and you also need at least my my view on it is that you need people that are going to tell you the truth that yes. are, they're going to be honest with you, not necessarily tell you what you want to hear, but instead tell you what you need to hear. And and at the same time, those people that are also um, also have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, okay. people that can give you that support uh, from that from the spiritual. Uh, perspective yeah I think that I think that's important did, did you surround yourself with those type of people when you were when you were writing the book or was it uh, community-wide also when I was writing the book I had um, my coach and mentor who is also a believer okay. a Christian as well who would have been there um, with me guiding me along the way and supporting and encouraging while I was writing the book yeah, so my coach and mentor. Okay. She was right. the one while I was writing the book, yeah. Now, as I said, I have visited your area, but only as a tourist. So I'm not familiar with how, uh, how life is there. And by that, I mean, I know there are areas in the world that are very, very much into to uh, Christianity and into Jesus Christ. There's other areas that are very heavy into uh, the Islamic faith or the Buddhist faith or Hindus or whatever. What is the um, what? What's the temperature there uh, in in that regard? Is, is it is it a, a Christian? Uh, is it primarily Christian? Is it primarily something else? I would say primarily Christian. It's mixed because we live in a mixed society, a mixed um, society here in Trinidad and Tobago, as you may, may mm -hmm. know. So we would have different religious faiths. Right. Um, right. Yeah, different religions. Yes, okay. you know, a mix of. So there's not like there, there, there's not persecution in place there as far as okay you're a Christian we got to slap you down or Muslim or whatever but it uh, it's pretty much religious freedom in in your area definitely definitely okay okay and good we thank, we thank God for that so far yes. good 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 yeah because you know I I know that there are there are those areas which are challenged the the thing is is that every time. Um, there's an area of the world that tries to stop Christianity. All they do is create more Christians every time. Yes. God wins every battle, you know. And the the, the world right. hadn't Amen. figured that out yet. The world hadn't figured that out, but we have. We we yeah. know. Yes. We know. We know for sure. Uh, again, the name of the book and that can be found at Amazon uh, is titled what? Finding me again. A practical approach to rebuilding your life after divorce. I yes, think that is so author. cool. I think that is just such an awesome title. Finding yourself, number one. I mean, to find yourself—that's a battle. Okay, as you know, when when you're when you're a young a youngster, uh, like uh, we've got uh, two of our grandkids live with us now permanently, and you know they're still at an age where they're trying to figure out who they are. Okay, well, yes. now your book. It, uh, it hints at, it doesn't say this, but it hints at it. I found myself. I know who I am. I know what my life is supposed to be about. Now, here's the great crash. Everything happens. Now I've lost myself. I don't know what to do. But now you've taken that and you've turned it around. And you said, finding myself again and becoming who Jesus Christ wants me to be. Do I have that about right? That's right. 
Yeah. Amen. Amen. And Amen. you Amen. and you have found yourself and you have found a way to move forward. So tell me now, you you're an author, obviously. You've got this book out. And I do encourage everybody to go out and get it. Uh, but you do a lot more. You've, you've already mentioned speaking that you've done. Um, just tell us a little bit more about what you're doing now. And the second part of the question is, do you have another book in you? Or are you going to go for round two? Okay. So first of all, um, beside being an author, I would have mentioned, and you would have said I'm a mentor speaker, um, that would um, encourage, you know, women with using my three hours approach of rediscovering, redefining and repurposing your life. I speak along that line and I would share with people how I, how I was able, from my own experience, how I was able to do it. And then um, just as how I um, was able to do it, I will share with you some practical steps as well that will enable you to do that. And it all comes down to you being able to rebuild your life after mm -hmm. any loss right well in my case i focus on divorce yes mm -hmm. right and knowing that you can rebuild your life after any loss well yes? let me let, let me uh, jump in real real quick just to ask a, yes. a, a quick follow-up question you are a speaker yeah. and you you obviously have an agenda and by that I mean you have you have a point that you want to that, that you want to make. Uh, where do you do these presentations? Are these in churches? Are they in community centers? Are they everywhere? Where 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 do you go speak? Okay, so um, with the well, most of it would be like church churches, okay. right? So so okay. far, most of my speaking yeah. engagement would be like churches. Those who wish to. Um, to invite me or have me because you know in some churches divorce is is a taboo oh, right yeah. and there's oh, a yeah. stigma yeah. and there's a stigma attached to it so mm -hmm. it's whoever you know d d doesn't have that taboo or stigma attached to it fine i also am a minister of the gospel so not just centered around my what i speak about but i also um deliver the word of god at my church as amen well. so during yes, your during yeah. your presentations uh, the word Jesus Christ comes out of your mouth more than once. I'm going to assume that, definitely. right? <laughs> <laughs> definitely, because definitely, definitely. So anything I I speak about, because I could not have rediscovered, redefined, or repurposed my life without Jesus Christ being the one or the foundation of me being able to do that. Amen. So whenever Amen. I speak, everything is from the Word of God. Everything is hinged from the Word of God, yes. Would you agree with me that without Jesus Christ that you never would have got yourself back on track? I would want to agree with that because, and practically, yes. Because mm -hmm. if you read my book, you would see it there very clearly. And I would have even mentioned, if it had not been for him, I have to mention him. Because if it had not been for him, I would not have been able to find myself again, knowing who I am. In Christ Jesus. Amen. You know, uh, I've, I've mentioned this a couple of times. People, Some people are, are hearing this for the first time. Others have heard me ad nauseum. But th there was a point in my life where I would be in a setting where people were saying, I can see the hand of God here in my life, and I can see the hand of God here, and I can see how He will move me here. And everybody is saying amen, and everybody's nodding their head, and I'm nodding my head too. And at the same time, in my mind, I'm going, not once, not once. Can't ever remember Him doing anything for me, not once. And then after accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I can look back over my life now and I can see his hand in everything I did from the time I was a kid until this very day. You know, it just depends on where you are in your journey, in your race, if I might, to Jesus Christ. You know, we we're supposed to run the race. Well, I'm running that race right now. And uh, I'm yeah. sure going to keep Jesus Christ right there. He's right ahead of me. All I got to do is, is chase him and we're good. Hello. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so do you have a second book in mind? Or is one? Or are you one and done? No, I am currently putting something together. 
Good. Yes, what's okay. the gun book? All right, good, yeah. good. Well, uh, you know, if it's anything like the first one, I'm sure it will be a great hit as well. You know, um, the, the, the book is great because of the fact that, you know, you do have to find yourself. And some people have to find themselves not just twice, as in your case, but some people have to find themselves several times. But I think that the key... And you, uh, again, I think you'll agree with me. The key to finding yourself is to find Jesus Christ, because before you do that, you are lost. You really, are, you don't, you're not on your plan. You're not on His plan, so your purpose hasn't been discovered yet. Would you agree with that? Yes, I agree with that because actually, He's God is the one who created us, and Amen. for us to really understand, and He created us um, for Him. Right. And I always tell people, we have to align ourselves with God, come back into right relationship with Him through Jesus Christ. And once we do that, then we would discover the true purpose that He has brought us here for. Without Him, we would not be able to discover that true purpose. Amen. Without Him, we would not know who I would not know who am I. And knowing who am I, finding me again, I would be able to be able to discover my purpose. Because after all, he, he created me and he knows everything about everything, me. Everything, right. And he did not create me for me or anyone else. He created me for him. Right, right. Amen. Yeah, he does, have a, he does have a purpose for each and every one of us. And, you know, uh, as I said earlier, mm -hmm. I wish he would have tapped me on the shoulder a lot earlier yes. and tell me what that yeah. purpose was. But once yes. you find it, it's like the, the world opens up, you know, and yes. you are yes. able to do so much more once you give God the glory. And I think that's the problem in society today is that society doesn't give God the glory. It's all about me, me, me. I did this, mm -hmm. I did that. Uh, and mm -hmm. you have to realize you didn't do anything. God, God yes. puts you on the path and you are simply following His plan and doing what He puts you on this earth to do. And Definitely. Uh, yeah, once you do that, once you do that, you know, things start mm -hmm. to start to get better for you. Now, uh, we're, we're running short on time, but I want you to have the opportunity here to, first of all, tell us who the target audience is for your book. If you have a specific group that, that you're uh, that you're aiming for, but also anything about the book or anything about your ministry that you would like for people to know. I want to give you plenty of time to to speak to, to all that. So the floor is yours. Okay, so mainly the book um, is to target Christian women. But while reading it and other persons who have read it, they would they would tell me, Jason, this book is not just for Christian women. Even the unsaved can, women can read this book, even unsaved men and even Christian women can read this book because it will, it, it's, it will help everyone in some way or the other based on the different chapters in the book. Amen. Yes, and then the topic is finding me again. So it, it was basically for women, but anybody can read this book and be able to draw something from it. Amen. Yes? Amen. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, as far as your speaking engagements, I want to uh, give, give you the opportunity to provide people with contact information, whichever, if, if you would prefer to give some anyway. Uh, we didn't really talk about it in the pre-show. But if you would, if there's, uh, I'm sure there's lots of churches out there that would love to have you come speak. And I want to give you the opportunity to provide them with some contact information to where they can do that. Okay, so I can be contacted email, which is life after divorce three r at gmail dot com. Life after divorce three r at gmail dot com. That's my email address. Amen. Amen. I'm glad you didn't give a phone number. I did warn you about that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's yes, kind of an inside joke. That, that's an inside joke between me and my guests <laughs> yes. here. But um, anyway, um, you know, I can see where you would be a tremendous value to, uh, especially women. And I'm not discounting men in this conversation either, but especially women going through that period of divorce because divorce is such 
it, it's a, it's a life shattering uh, thing. You know, it, it's not. There's no other way to say it. It is shattering because you know your your whole your your whole world really uh, comes to a screeching halt for a minute, and you gotta you gotta regroup. And yes. you you did that be, um, with the strength of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And you know uh, you've given glory to Him. I give glory to Him every day for mine as well. And. It's unfortunate that so many women don't have that in their in their heart. Mm -hmm. Have other women come to you and said, "How did you do it? How did you get through it?" Yes, yes, they do. A lot of women come to me, and I would encourage them, and I will share with them how I did it, and some of the practical approaches I would have taken as well. Because even though we are Christian and we depend on Jesus Christ, we mm -hmm. also have to step out in faith. And one thing that you know the Lord would have help me and that's a chapter in the book faith and focus because he is there but we also have to step out in faith and take some practical steps as well and yeah. focus is very very important yes focusing on him allowing him to lead us and when he instructs us we just move that's mm -hmm. actions that faith so we put our trust in him we be, believe in him so that's faith and focus and not to be distracted because sometimes these things are things that will come to distract us from what God has in store and have right. planned for us. So you right. too can reimagine your life and line it up back with God's mission for you. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I know it's hard enough to go through this kind of stuff when you have Jesus Christ in your life. I can't even imagine what it's like for those that don't have the hope of Jesus Christ yes. in their life. That is really rough. And I know that you're moving people and talking to people about that uh, in all of your presentations to keep the Lord uh, Jesus Christ as a main thing. That's that's what really mm -hmm. does it. That's that's how you yes. that's how you're able to get through it. For those of you that have not accepted Jesus Christ yet, please do. Uh, all you need to say is a very brief prayer in your own words and let the Lord know that you are a sinner but that you know He died for you. And if you will accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you will be saved. And one day, we will meet you in the air with all Christians living and dead at the sound of that last trumpet before the rapture. So, Giselle, thank you so much for being a part of the show today. Appreciate it, and I hope to see you again. Um, thank you for having me, Mr. Williams. Um, I it was really... Um, a privilege. It was really a blessing to be here. God bless you. God, God bless, bless each and every one of you. Thank you. God bless you.